Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, this is lesson seven, meiosis of the reproduction unit. Uh, meiosis does sound a lot like mitosis, um, but there are some very important differences, uh, but there are also some similarities. Uh, if you're familiar with mitosis at this point, if you've done the work from the last lesson, uh, this should be just like adding a few things on. There are just a few differences uh, and if you'll notice the key points above me, three and four, there's actually two parts to meiosis, but again, they are so similar to mitosis that uh, if you're familiar with it, it should be no problem. Uh, our key points as well, sexual reproduction uh, and homologous pair, we'll get into that. Um, but I'll note as well that this is um, the next part from asexual reproduction. So we had been talking about asexual reproduction and mitosis and the different advantages and disadvantages of that. Uh, we'll be moving into sexual reproduction, uh, the advantages and disadvantages, uh, the process and all that stuff. Uh, so we'll talk about it. Let's go. Uh, so sexual reproduction, uh, it requires two parents and it results in genetic variation. That's why you don't look exactly like your mom or your dad. Um, now would be a good time to pause and copy down what's on here and then continue listening. Uh, so sexual reproduction produces offspring or children that are genetically different from each other and from parents and from any other member of their species. And that's kind of what makes humans special. Uh, along with, you know, uh, dogs uh, would be another example uh, of sexual reproduction where no dog is exactly the same. Um, genetic variation occurs because the offspring inherits half its genetic material from the female parent and the other half from the male parent. Uh, so it, you, you get a mix. That is the whole key. When we're talking about a, uh, asexual reproduction, the five different types, uh, there was no mixing between the two um, parents. There was no two parents. It was just one. So it was always exactly the same. It was a clone, if you remember. Uh, in sexual reproduction, there is no cloning. There is mixing. And therefore, um, there is genetic variation. So that's why we look different. Um, the number of chromosomes. So humans have 46 chromosomes in their body. And they're actually in pairs. And we call them homologous pairs. You'll see key point number two. So we have 23 homologous pairs, which makes 46 chromosomes total. Uh, humans have 23 chromosomes in their sex cells. So sperm and egg cells, sperm for males and eggs for females, there is no pairs. Uh, we just get the one set. Um, it takes one sperm and one egg to create a body cell. So a sperm and an egg each have 23 chromosomes because they're not paired up. So when they come together, uh, and we'll talk more about that in future lessons, uh, we add their chromosomes together to get a full 46 that 46 chromosome cell can then proceed to um, split through mitosis to um, produce a human um, eventually. Uh, but how do we get the sperm in the egg cell? That is the real question of today. We know how we can get more body cells, but how do we get sperm and egg cells? Uh, so we'll talk about a few more um, terms. Uh, diploid is 46 chromosomes, so that's all of our body cells, because um, diploid is two, that's two sets uh, of 23 chromosomes, and haploid is 23 chromosomes. Half the genetic material, or haploid, are carried in gametes, and gametes are sex cells, which are sperm and egg. So when I talk about gametes, I'm talking about sperm and egg in general. Uh, that would be our sex cells. Uh, fertilization occurs when the male sex cell combines with the female sex cell to produce a zygote and we will talk more about that later on that is not uh, necessarily key to to um, memorize as a fact right now we will get into that in future lessons so uh, what creates these gametes what process you guessed it it's meiosis so meiosis occurs in the gametes and is a process that produces eggs and sperm uh, with 23 chromosomes. So all sperm and egg cells are different from one another. Uh, that's why um, we get genetic variation uh, in people. All sperm and egg cells are different from one another. Uh, I just read that one, sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Meiosis occurs in two parts. So there's meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. That's point 3 and 4. Uh, they both contain prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So you already know the titles. They are in the same order. Um, we just, just call them meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Uh, interphase occurs before meiosis 1 begins. So the regular um, functions of the cell occur before meiosis begins. And it replicates the DNA uh, in the S phase. So I think this is a diagram. There's also a diagram in your notes. Um, so we should be around here when we're copying it down. I hope I gave um, kind of the right amount of space. So in meiosis one, we start with a single cell. Um, it is uh, a diploid cell and it has gone through interphase, which means it's replicated its DNA. Uh, in prophase, the chromosomes condense, and in metaphase, they line up along the equator. But there is one key difference here between this and mitosis. You'll notice that not all of them line up along the equator. They line up in pairs. Those are the homologous pairs. Anaphase splits the pairs. Telophase splits the cells. Uh, the nuclei and interphase, interkinesis, uh, or cytokinesis, splits the two cells uh, apart, so two daughter cells. So it is very similar to mitosis. This is meiosis one, the first stage in meiosis, except in meiosis one, a pair of matching chromosomes, one from each parent, called a homologous pair, line up at the equator. That is what I refer to uh, right here. Uh, the homologous pairs line up. You don't see all of them lining up along the equator. The pairs line up, the red, the big red and the big blue. Don't worry about the little switch over right here. We won't worry about that. Um, so that is what splits up. The homologous pair splits up at the equator. Uh, the homologous pairs separate and move to opposite poles and the two daughter cells are formed at the end of meiosis one. So now we have two cells. The phases are prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one. So uh, it's the same as mitosis. We're just adding the one after it. Uh, we don't have to say meiosis prophase 1. If it has a 1 after it, it is assumed that it is uh, meiosis that we're talking about. So if I say prophase, I'm talking about mitosis. If I say prophase 1, I'm talking about meiosis 1. And if I say prophase 2, I'm talking about meiosis 2. Um, let's move here. So uh, some specific terms about what happens. Homologous pairs in prophase 1 shorten and thicken, uh, the membrane around the nucleus disappears, similar to mitosis. The homologous pairs are lined up at the equator of the cell. Again, similar, but slightly different in terms of homologous pairs. Anaphase 1. Homologous pairs move to opposite poles of the cell. Uh, so this is the same as mitosis, except it's the pairs being split. The chromosomes are not yet being ripped apart. They will be, but not yet. Uh, and telophase 1, the membrane for the nucleus forms around each set of chromosomes. So now we have two nuclei in one cell, and the cell divides through cytokinesis. We now have two cells, so that's why this diagram has two cells, and they're doing the exact same thing. Um, so this is prophase 2. Um, prophase 2, again, the... Uh, chromosomes condense, they might already be condensed, so that is kind of a transition step. You can see now in metaphase 2, the pairs uh, line up uh, in the middle along the equator and are being prepared to be split. Anaphase, they are split, so it's not the homologous pair split anymore. The chromosomes are actually being torn, just like in mitosis. Uh, and then in this case, telophase occurs. We have uh, the nucleus forming and cytokinesis then occurs, which creates four different and unique daughter cells. Uh, those are gametes. They might be eggs. They might be sperm. Uh, but that is um, the process of making gametes. So you get four for every one cell, which is different from mitosis. Let's lay it all out. So in meiosis two, the DNA is not replicated again before. Uh, it is done. Meiosis 2 is like mitosis because in both processes the chromatids of each chromosome are pulled to opposite poles. What, it, what I mean by that is that the chromosomes are actually being torn in half. In meiosis 1 
It is unique because the homologous pairs are being split. Uh, so in prophase two, the chromosomes tighten up again. In metaphase two, they line up at the equator, just like um, uh, mitosis. In anaphase two, they're torn apart at the middle. And in telophase two, the nuclear envelope is made. We then have cytokinesis to make four daughter cells. That is great. Uh, they might be eggs, they might be sperm, depending on if you are male or female. Uh, each daughter cell inherits one chromatid from each chromosome, uh, which makes it unique. End result is four haploid cells, which if we remember haploid means 23 chromosomes, each with half the number of chromosomes as the original parent cell. So uh, that is why, part of why it's unique. You only get part of one parent, you get part of another, and then those are spliced together. Um, so some similarities and differences between mitosis and meiosis before we do get into the assignment. Uh, the assignment is to orient you to what the keys are between them. Uh, and you'll all have it in one spot, uh, the diagrams and the explanations, uh, and in your own words. So some similarities and differences uh, between mitosis and meiosis. Um, mitosis occurs in the body cells, while meiosis occurs in the sex organs to produce sex cells. Um, mitosis is much more common throughout your body. It occurs in your entire body, while meiosis is in just that one place. Um, mitosis creates two cells, while meiosis creates four. Uh, the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell for mitosis. So they start with 46, and after mitosis occurs, they both have 46. While when meiosis occurs, they have half the number of chromosomes. And that's because it splits an extra time. Uh, and it doesn't duplicate the second time in there. It duplicates once and then it splits into four cells, leaving them all with half of what they should have if they were a body cell. Uh, mitosis is an asexual reproduction uh, feature and occurs in body cells. Um, sexual reproduction um, is uh, for meiosis. Meiosis uh, facilitates that process. Uh, what I'd like you to do now is on the grids provided in your uh, booklet, uh, draw the diagrams for each phase of mitosis, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, and on the second grid write an explanation for each phase in your own words, uh, something that's easy for you to remember, uh, highlight keywords, uh, and if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Um, and thanks very much for watching.